Rapunzel. Once upon a time, an old couple lived in a small village. Their dearest wish in all the world was to have a lovely daughter of their own, but they had no luck. One day, the wife came to the husband and made a strange request. I desperately want a little bit of lettuce from the witch's garden. Oh dear, can you please bring me some? The husband agreed and went to steal the lettuce as his wife had asked. <laughs> Maybe this lettuce has magic powers, and it will help us have a baby. Early the following morning, the infuriated witch burst into their house. How dare you steal my lettuce! You will regret this! I will teach you a lesson and put a curse on you! How dare you steal my lettuce! You will regret it! Uh, I'm very sorry. My wife wanted it so badly, and I really wanted to please her. Oh, <laughs> oh is that so? Your wife can have as much lettuce as she wants. But I shall claim your firstborn in return, you hear me? What? The witch vanished as suddenly as she had come. The husband didn't understand what she meant and felt worried. Time went by and the couple had a beautiful baby girl, tiny and adorable. They were overjoyed, but they remembered the witch's request and were afraid. What will we do if she comes to take our little daughter away? Uh, we can't let that happen. We must leave tonight. <sighs> that night, they prepared to escape with their infant. But it was too late. The witch had anticipated them and appeared at their house. Do you really think that you can run from me? That child is mine! Oh, oh, please. Oh, no. A promise please. is a promise. Hmm. Leave me, my baby. Please. Oh, oh my baby. Hmm. It is too late for tears and pleas now. I will claim her as we agreed. No. Oh. <laughs> please. Oh, oh my baby. Oh. Such a sweet little girl. From now on, I will call her Rapunzel. <laughs> the winch kept Rapunzel locked all alone in a tall tower. The years went by and Rapunzel blossomed into a beautiful girl. The witch never allowed her to leave the castle. So all she could do was look out the window and sing sad songs. The witch would come to visit Rapunzel in her tower every day to see how she was doing. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair! When the witch called to her, Rapunzel would let down her hair from a window at the top of the tower. It was so long that the witch could use it as a rope to climb all the way to the top.
One day, a prince rode past the castle on his noble steed. Hmm. He heard a lovely hmm? voice singing, oh. but he couldn't tell where it came from. Hmm. Oh. oh, where is that beautiful singing coming from? Could it be that tower over there? Hello! Is anyone there? No one answered, and the singing stopped. <gasps> the prince looked everywhere, but found no one. He had to give up and continue on his way. The prince returned home to his castle, but he couldn't get the beautiful song out of his head. But who could it be? Why wouldn't she answer my call? I will return there tomorrow and find out! The prince went back to the witch's tower to search for the mysterious singer. When he saw the witch approaching, he ducked behind a tree to see what she would do. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair right now. When the prince saw how beautiful Rapunzel was, he was surprised and angry that the witch kept her locked up. He resolved to come back the following day. The prince returned the next evening after sunset. Mimicking the witch, he called to Rapunzel. Oh, Rapunzel! Rapunzel, let down your golden hair! Rapunzel did as he asked, and he was <coughs> able to climb up to her tower. <coughs> when he reached the top and saw Rapunzel face to face, he fell in love with her instantly. <coughs> You are the loveliest maiden I have ever set eyes on. What is your name? Oh, my, I, my name is Rapunzel. Oh, Rapunzel, why do you stay in this dreary place? Come to my kingdom with me. I am sorry, but I can't. The witch keeps me locked up night and day. And if she finds you here, she will surely punish you, Prince. Please run away. I can't bear to leave you here. Uh, Wait for me. Uh, I will... I will return every night. Uh, oh, my Prince. <laughs> The prince visited Rapunzel every night in secret, just as he had promised. <laughs> Rapunzel waited for him all day, and when they were together, they would talk for hours and sing in the moonlight. <laughs> then one day, the witch saw the prince as he descended from the tower. Oh! Furious, she grabbed a pair of scissors and stormed into the tower. <laughs> Treacherous girl! How dare you betray me! Oh. After I have fed you and cared for you! <laughs> I'm sorry. I will never see him again. I promise. <laughs> you will pay for this, you little traitor! <laughs> With those words, the witch took her scissors and hacked off all of Rapunzel's beautiful hair. 
The witch sent Rapunzel away to the desert so the prince would never find her. Frightened and desperate, Rapunzel prayed fervently for her prince's safety. Please, my prince, do not return to the tower. Save yourself! <laughs> Unaware of what had happened, the prince came to the tower to see Rapunzel the next day. Oh, my beautiful Rapunzel! Let down your golden hair! When he saw the hair come down, the prince had no doubts and began to climb. The witch had let down Rapunzel's severed hair. The prince tumbled down into the thorn bushes below and went completely blind. He wandered the world searching for his lost love. After many long travels, he arrived in the desert and heard Rapunzel's voice carried by the winds of a sandstorm. Is it, is it truly her voice? Uh, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, where, Rapunzel, where are you? Rapunzel! Hearing the prince's call, Rapunzel ran to him. I'm here, my prince, my, oh. Uh, is that you, Rapunzel? Yes. Rapunzel. Please forgive me. <laughs> the prince and Rapunzel held each other in a tight embrace and shed happy tears together. As Rapunzel's tears fell on the prince's eyes, he suddenly realized that his sight had returned. My my eyes. I can I can see Rapunzel. Prince. The prince took Rapunzel home to his kingdom, and they were married. They became king and queen, and a few years later, they had their own baby daughter, a beautiful princess who looked just like Rapunzel. <laughs> they all lived happily ever after. The Frog Prince Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess. She was very vain and selfish, and cared only about showing off her beauty and collecting expensive things. Ah, uh, what is this? I, I can't wear this old grubby dress. One day, her father, the king, told her he had a present for her and showed her a magnificent ball made of pure gold. My dearest, a neighboring kingdom has sent this golden ball as a gift to you. Oh, it's so pretty! Wow! It is. It is also the only one of its kind in the world. was thrilled and played with her ball in the garden every day. Soon, however, the princess began to grow bored because she had no friends. Suddenly, she heard a voice that seemed to come out of nowhere. Why don't you play with me? Uh? 
Surprised, the princess looked everywhere, trying to see where the voice had come from, but she saw no one. If you want to play with me. As soon as she said those words, the owner of the voice came out of hiding and revealed himself. He turned out to be a frog. <laughs> you are the most lovely princess in the world. Would you let me be your friend and play with you? The princess was shocked and disgusted because she thought the frog was hideous. Ah! How dare you presume such a thing? I can't play with the repulsive, slimy frog! Get out of my sight! I may be ugly, but I'm fun to play with. I would rather play by myself than touch something dirty and horrible like you. You will make me dirty! <laughs> Furious, the princess turned away and stalked off back to the castle to get away from the frog. One sunny afternoon, the princess was playing with her golden ball as usual. When it slipped out of her hands, and splashed into a well. <laughs> the princess was very upset and started to cry. <laughs> what can I do? My beautiful golden ball is lost forever! <laughs> At that moment, the frog heard the princess crying and came out of hiding to stand before her. Don't cry. I can help you get your ball back. <laughs> Leave me alone! How can a small, ugly frog help me get my ball from that huge well? It's easy for me. I jump in and out of the well every day. Uh, uh, then you can really get my ball back? Of course. But you have to promise me something in return. What? I will bring you your ball if you promise that you will be my friend from now on. You will allow me to eat with you when you have your meals and sleep next to you in your bed every night. Will you do that for me, princess? A anything, I promise. Just please get me my ball. Satisfied, the frog leapt into the well. He emerged a few moments later, holding the golden ball. Princess, here, I've kept my promise. Now, let's play! I, my golden ball! I got my golden ball back! <laughs> The princess turned and ran towards the castle without stopping to thank the frog. <laughs> princess! Princess! Wait! You promised you would play with me! Oh. I lied, of course! Did you really expect me to play with an ugly, slimy frog like you? I never want to see you again! Uh -oh. The next evening, the princess was having dinner with the king. Suddenly, they heard a loud knocking at the door, and the princess recognized the frog's voice. Princess! It is I, the frog! 
I have come to keep you to your promise. You said you would allow me to eat with you. Please let me in. Who is that? And what is he talking about? <gasps> Embarrassed, the princess hesitated, but she told the king the truth about what happened between her and the frog by the well. The king grew very angry. Are you telling me you broke your promise? Open the door at once. <laughs> Hesitantly, the princess opened the door. The frog hopped in right away and jumped towards the princess. <laughs> Princess, be nice to your friend. <laughs> Invite the frog to the table to eat with us. <laughs> that evening, the frog ate beside the princess. As for the princess herself, she was so disgusted that she couldn't swallow a bite. Princess, I'm full now. I'm ready to go to bed. Will you bring me to your bedroom? The princess was horrified. She didn't want the frog in her nice, clean room. But the king insisted. The frog helped you when you were in trouble, and you made him a promise. Take him to your room. <laughs> the princess had no choice, so she took the frog to her room. Stay away, you disgusting creature! <laughs> but princess, aren't you forgetting your promise? I want to sleep in your bed. Please let me lie down, or I will go tell the king. <gasps> that is enough! How can I sleep with a dirty, ugly frog like you? <laughs> Furious, the princess hurled a pillow at the frog. <laughs> go away and never come back! Suddenly... Something very strange happened. There was a glow of light, and the frog transformed into a handsome prince. The princess was shocked. Princess, I am the prince of the neighboring kingdom. I was cursed by an evil witch and turned into a frog. Thank you for breaking the spell, my princess. Would you... agree to be my wife? The prince was so handsome that the princess fell in love with him right away. But then she remembered how rude she was to him when he was a oh. frog and she felt very embarrassed. Oh, but prince... I was so horrible to you before. Can you ever forgive me, please? I understand, princess. I will gladly accept your apology if you make another promise. From now on, you will never judge people by appearances. Yes, I promise. The princess learned her lesson, and from that day on, she was kind and polite to everyone she met, regardless of their appearance. The prince and the princess lived happily ever after. 
donkey skin. Once upon a time, there was an eccentric king who ruled a vast kingdom. He had a beautiful wife and a lovely little daughter. <laughs> Has my magic donkey just laid another gold coin? Bring it to me right away. <laughs> You there with the long face, bring me that coin at once. Uh, do as the king says. The king owned a very special donkey who laid gold coins for him every day. Mm. Be very careful with my donkey. You know how temperamental he is. Of course, your majesty. The miraculous donkey made the king very wealthy. When he had acquired all the riches he could want, he grew restless and began to use the gold to buy weapons and invade other kingdoms. Yeah, charge! Oh, we lost retreat, retreat! Oh, oh, help! <laughs> At that moment, the king received a tragic message. Your Majesty, the Queen is very ill! What? I must go to her! Oh, your majesty, I feel my end is near. Oh, uh, don't say that. You must be strong. Oh, your majesty, when I am gone, you may wish to remarry. Promise me that you won't marry until you find a woman wiser and more beautiful than me. Uh, no, don't leave me. Uh, forgive me. Oh, no! Come back to me! No! After the queen's death, the king felt miserable and alone. As he had been promised, he began to search for a woman even more wise and beautiful than she had been to take as his new wife. Uh, Your Majesty, uh, we are unable to find a lady more radiant and clever than the late queen was. We are sorry. Um, as he glanced out the window, the king's eye fell on the lovely young princess. Why, my daughter is already a woman grown. The princess is old enough to choose a suitor, indeed. The king considered for a moment. Uh, of course, there is no other woman in the kingdom as beautiful as my daughter. Only she is worthy to be my queen. But, 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 y y your majesty... Silence! I shall marry the princess! Hmm. Oh, but this isn't right. Uh, it's just not right. The king's sudden decision shocked his servants, but they had no choice but to obey him. Hmm? Oh, what shall I do? I cannot accept my father's preposterous offer. But how can I reject him? Uh, do not weep, princess. I have an idea. Have you heard of the fairy who lives in a cave in the forest? A fairy? I have heard it said that she can resolve any situation. Can she really help me? The princess rode into the forest and soon reached the fairy's colorfully ornamented cave. Mm -hmm. Welcome, princess. I know why you have come. Your father wants to marry you, but I know a way you can avoid your father's proposal. Oh, tell me, please. Go at once to the king and ask him to order a dress for you as blue as the sky. Thank you. I will try. Returning to the palace, the princess asked to speak to her father. Father, I have a request to make before I marry you. I want you to make a dress the color of the sky for me. Oh, if that is what you want, hmm. Seek out the most skilled tailor in the kingdom and order him to create a gown the color of the sky. Uh, yes, your majesty. But princess, may I come in? Well, what is it? <sighs> Look at this, princess. Oh, he really made the gown. What do I do now? You should go back to the fairy and ask her. The fairy advised the princess to demand a dress the color of moonlight. The king agreed and sent her the completed dress once more. The princess rushed back to the fairy. What should I ask him now? This time, you must ask him for the skin of his precious donkey, the one that lays golden coins. 
When he gives it to you, take the skin and the gowns and leave at once for a far away kingdom. Very well. Father, I will marry you, but only if you give me the skin of your donkey. That is an easy request to grant. Servants, bring me that donkey's skin at once. Yes, yes your, your majesty. majesty. The king gave the princess the skin as she had requested. The princess put it on and left the palace that very day, taking the gowns with her. The fairy gave her a magic wand and an enchanted jewelry box. Now, hear me? You understand? Exhausted by her long journey, the princess stopped at a humble farmhouse. Uh, be gone. I need no paupers here. Oh, please. I will do any kind of work you give me. Just let me stay. Very well. I can use an extra pair of hands. You can go clean the pigsty over there. How about that, hey? Oh, thank you. Mm, Sunday will be your day off. You can stay in the shed in the woods. You are too filthy to sleep over here. Thank you. From that day, the princess worked in the kitchen and around the farm, and always wore her donkey skin. Every Sunday, she would wash all of the dirt and dress herself in one of the magnificent gowns she kept in the enchanted jewelry box. Oh, I miss the luxuries of the palace. I wonder how my father is now. The princess waited all week for Sunday to come, when she could wear her sky-blue dress, or the one that shimmered like moonlight, and remember how it felt to be a princess again. One day, a young prince from a nearby kingdom got lost in the woods while hunting rabbits. Oh, where am I? H how do I find my way back? Huh? Why would there be a shed in a place like this? Could someone be living there? Uh? Peeking through the keyhole, he saw the beautiful princess in one of her gorgeous gowns. <laughs> He fell in love with her at oh. once. I have never seen anyone so lovely. She must be a fairy. <sighs> After that day, the prince could not stop thinking about the vision he saw in the forest and could not eat or sleep. <sighs> you haven't eaten anything. Are you ill? Is something the matter? I just... Can't forget the fairy I saw in the woods. Oh, is this about your fantasies again? I have already sent someone to investigate. They say that shed belongs to a filthy girl who wears a donkey skin. What you saw was a dream. Oh, but it wasn't. I must have some of those delicious cookies. Oh, well, if there is no other way. Oh. The queen could not watch her son lose any more weight. So she called Donkey Skin and told her to make cookies for the prince. Naturally, nobody knew that she was a princess herself. I will do the best job I can. What happened to my ring? What's taking you so long? Why are you not done yet over there? I'll be done in a second. Uh, I will, just... Finally, the prince got a chance to enjoy the cookies. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, do not eat so fast. You will get a stomach ache. How can I? They're so light and airy. I feel much better already. I am so happy to hear it. Oh, oh, um, oh what is this? A ring in the cookie? Oh. The ring gave the prince a brilliant idea. Oh, mother, there's something I need you to promise me. Oh, what is it? Oh, you sound so mysterious. Let me marry the girl who can put this ring on. Please. What? Ahem, 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 anything that can save you from your illness. Ahem. Servant? True to her word, the queen invited all the princesses from the neighboring countries to try the ring. Now, the princess who can put this ring on will marry my son. Uh, I'm sure it's my size. Oh, it doesn't fit. <laughs> oh, it is impossible. It is too small. 
Oh, careful, do not damage the ring. And <clears throat> next one, nobody? There are no more princesses left in the neighborhood. It does not have to be a princess. Anyone can try it on. If it fits, they can marry my son. Your Majesty, I brought all the maids of the palace in. I cannot help it. Let them try the ring on. Hmm, maybe not this one. She is so filthy and stinky. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you, Your Majesty. Uh, yeah. oh, 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 I cannot believe it. Oh, my. She's the fairy I've been telling you about. It's, it's her. Uh, <laughs> the princess had no choice but to tell the prince and queen her tragic I am story. I a princess from the neighboring kingdom. I had to run away because my father proposed to me after my mother's death. How horrible. Shall we invite him to the wedding? I want him to know that you're under my protection now. Oh, thank you. The people cheered for the prince and princess and were amazed by their magnificent wedding. Oh, we're so happy for them. Congratulations. At that moment, the king's carriage arrived. <gasps> my daughter! Father! Oh, my dear. Oh. We meet again, finally. Oh, my child, you are alive. I almost went mad with grief. Please, forgive me. Oh. oh, let us forget the past. The king found himself a beautiful and clever wife. The prince and princess were soon crowned king and queen. They lived long and happily, and their kingdom was peaceful and prosperous. <laughs> Kongji and Pakji. Once upon a time, there lived a kind-hearted couple who longed for a child of their own. They were overjoyed when they finally had a beautiful daughter, who they named Kongji. <laughs> Surrounded by the love and care of her parents, Kongji grew up to be pretty, clever, and gentle. One day, Kongji's mother fell ill, and her condition grew worse day by day. Oh, Kongji. My child, uh, uh, Fer uh, Mom, uh, no, uh, do leave me. Oh, dearest wife. <laughs> <laughs> Kongji and her father were left all alone. Kongji's father mourned the loss of his wife, but after a while he married again, and Kongji got a stepmother. The new stepmother came to live with them and brought her own daughter, Patsy. Welcome, Mother. I am Kongji. <laughs> mama, oh. Mama, I want her dress. Uh huh. Of course you can have it, sweetie. You know you can have anything you want, okay? Mm? Uh oh. Mama, can I have those shoes too? Oh, you remind me of myself when I was your age. Such a pretty girl should always have the best of everything. Hmm. You know, Kongji, you are a whole year older than Patri. It is only right that you should share everything with your younger sister. Isn't that right? Uh, of course. Uh, I will. <laughs> Give me that now. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the new stepmother and Patchi were very cruel to poor Kongji. They took all the good food and fine clothes for themselves, while Kongji had to wear rags and work very hard. Mm, Kongji, over here. Kongji! Uh, we are going to the market. Take this jar and fill it with water. Okay, Kongji? Uh, yes, Mother. And don't you dare be lazy. Fill that jar up, okay? <sighs> uh, I've been drawing water all morning, but the jar won't stay full. Huh? Oh, no! There's a hole in it. Uh, but what do I do now? Mother will be furious with me. <laughs>
As Kungji sat there crying helplessly, a toad sidled over to her. Don't cry, Kungji. Maybe I can help you. If I close the hole with my body, you will be able to fill the jar. Let's try it! With the toad's help, Kongji was finally able to fill the jar and bring it home. Kongji's stepmother and Patchi were shocked to see the jar filled to the brim when they returned. What? How did she manage to fill that jar? The following day, the stepmother decided to come up with an even greater challenge for Kongji. Kongji, I want you to plow the pebble field. Here, use this hoe. Oh, but I can't do it with a wooden hoe. Don't talk back and do as you're told. And you'd better do it well, okay? Uh, oh, 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 this is impossible. And now my hoe is broken in half. Oh, what do I do now? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anok saw Kongji crying and came over to her. Listen, Kongji, there's no cause for tears. Look, I can use my big, strong jaws to tear out the weeds. Watch me now. Uh? The ox wandered across the pebble field, chewing up the weeds as he went. Thanks to his help, the field was soon plowed. Plowed the entire field yourself. Oh. A few days later, there was a big feast in the village. Oh, yeah. Kongji's stepmother and Patji <laughs> spent the whole morning before the mirror, dressing up and ornamenting themselves. Oh, so Is this pretty? <laughs> you are always gorgeous, my lovely Patji. Hey, Kongji! You may come to the feast, but only after you dry and mill three sacks of rice in the pantry and loom one roll of fabric. Do not come until you are done, okay? You understand? But I can't do that in one day. That is your concern. Do as you're told and don't talk back. <laughs> <laughs> her little tricks won't help her now. She will never get all of this done in one day. <laughs> she won't even have time to come near the feast. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there is no way that I can finish all this milling and weaving in one day. <sighs> At those words, some sparrows flew in and sat beside her. Using their strong, sharp beaks, the sparrows peeled the rice in no time at all. Uh, oh, <laughs> thank you, kind sparrows. <laughs> of course, I still have a wool of fabric to loom. <sighs> Don't worry, Kongji. I will loom the fabric for you. Don't worry. Who are you? Looking up, uh, Kongji saw a luminous, shimmering fairy standing before her. A, a fairy? <laughs> Here is a present from heaven to reward your kind heart and hard work. Put on this outfit and go enjoy yourself uh, at the feast. Can I really go to the feast? Oh, I am so happy. Oh, thank you, fairy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Kongji was amazed and mystified, but she gladly accepted the lovely outfit and hurried off to the feast. This is just like a dream. I don't even recognize myself in these beautiful clothes and fancy shoes. So awesome! <laughs>
At that moment, the prince's cortege passed by. Make way! Make way for the prince! Oh, no! Oh, 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 oh no, my shoe! What do I do now? Oh, 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 oh but uh, I must get my shoe back! Gongji did not have time to search for her shoe, so she left it and ran off to the feast. Who was that lovely maiden who just ran by? I don't know, your highness. Bring me that shoe she just lost. Oh, uh, yes. Here you are, sir. Ah. Uh, I want you to search the entire village until you find the foot that fits this shoe. I wish to marry that girl. Ah, uh, yes, your highness. <laughs> when Kongji finally made it to the feast, everyone noted her extraordinary beauty and grace. Oh, I never knew there was such a remarkably pretty girl in our village. She must be an angel sent from heaven. Oh, oh look. Ah! Who is that? Hmm? Why, that's Kongji! Hmm? How did she get here? And where did she get those clothes? You didn't buy them for her, did you? <laughs> well, of course not. The prince was haunted by the vision of Kongji's radiance, and her face wouldn't leave his memory. He waited impatiently for news of her. Hmm, so you haven't tracked her down yet. I'm sorry, uh, we have looked everywhere, but... Uh, uh, I want you to find her at once. Uh, yes, your highness. Oh, this is the only house we haven't tried yet. I do hope she lives here. I have been sent by the prince to identify the owner of this shoe. He wishes to make her his wife. Uh, all of the women in the house must come out. Uh, what? That shoe? <laughs> Why, this must be mine. I lost my shoe yesterday. Here, let me try it. Quickly, quickly. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, Mother, it will never fit your huge feet. Look, it's a big <laughs> It fits me, doesn't it? <laughs> Carefully, it's ripping. Please, take it off. Uh, are there no other women in your house? Come on. N no, only Kongji, but she's just our maid. Oh, it can't be hers. No way. It can't be hers. <laughs> this is the last house in the village. It is my duty to try the shoe on every woman here. What? <sighs> Kongji! Kongji! Come out here if you are finished! Oh, yes, Mother. But she can't try it on. She's a maid. She's nobody. 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 Silence. Please, try this on. Uh, uh, oh, I have the other one, too. Uh, 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 you must be the one, then. I'm so glad I found you at last. Uh, please come with us to meet the prince. He is waiting for you. You will be the princess. Uh, uh, but this is ridiculous. This must be a joke. Oh, oh Kongji, darling sister, please take me with you. Can I marry the prince too? Oh, please. I want to marry him. Oh, I see now that I should have been kinder to her. It is too late now. What am I going to get married? Oh, oh, oh. I have heard many good things about you and your gentle heart. I wish to punish your stepmother and Patri for being so cruel to you. Uh, oh, no, please don't. They are still my mother and sister. Can they come and live with me? It is true, you do have a noble heart. Very well, I shall do as you ask. Prepare my wedding with Kongji. We will be married at once. Although Kongji suffered at the hands of her stepmother and stepsister, her generous nature won her the love of the prince and touched the hearts of all who knew her.
신청 Don't cry, please. Once upon a time, a blind man named Shim lived in a village. Please, give me some milk for my little Chum. She is starving. Oh, oh, poor little girl. Oh, what happened to your mother? Oh, there, there. Chung's mother had died giving birth to her. She was taken care of by her blind father and the ladies of the village. Chung grew up to be a kind and beautiful young lady. <laughs> she was skilled at sewing, so she used her talents to make money to support herself and her father. Chung! Chung! My darling, where are you? Where are you, Chung? Chung had gone to the market, hoping to sell some of the clothes she had sewn. Shim was concerned and went out to wait for her. Oh, oh my, oh, my poor Chung will get soaked to the bone in this hard rain. Whatever will she do? Oh. Blind Shim wandered down the road in search of Chung. Help me! Help me! Help me! Oh, oh no! Grab this! <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you so much. Oh. Mm. Uh, it must be very hard for you that you can't see. Oh, I've grown accustomed to it. I just wish I could do more for my daughter, Chung. She works so hard. I'm always happy when I can give my father something delicious to eat. Oh, is that a guest? You will have your mm -hmm. sight back and your daughter will prosper if oh. you give 300 sacks of rice to Mongun Temple. What? I can have my sight back? Yes. Oh, oh my father will see again? Oh. Uh, that's a wonderful offer, but... How will we ever get 300 sacks of rice? We are so poor. Oh. Oh. I must help my father see again. But... Oh, where will I get 300 sacks of rice? Oh. One day, a merchant ship on its way to China made an announcement. They needed a young girl to volunteer to be sacrificed. We need to sacrifice a young girl to the sea to calm the waters for the journey. We are offering 300 sacks of rice in return. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Who needs 300 sacks of rice when they're dead? Hmm? Are they really going to sacrifice someone? Hmm. What? 300 sacks of rice? Is this true? Will you really give us 300 sacks of rice? Yes, we will. Then I'm offering myself. <laughs> this is excellent. Chong, why do we have meat in our soup today? Uh, my sewing work is going well. I, I've been getting lots of jobs. Um, have you? Um, this is really delicious. Uh, I have a wonderful daughter. Chew <laughs> uh, carefully, father. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, father, 
When you get your sight back, it enjoy seeing the village. Find a good woman to marry. And live happily ever after. <laughs> no, if I ever see again, all I want is to look at my beautiful daughter. But it doesn't matter. I am already the happiest man in the world. I have a good daughter who cooks delicious food for me. <laughs> ah! Time to go now, Chang. Ah! What? Uh, go where? Chang, ah! what's going on? Chang! Ah! <laughs> Chang, my little Chang! <laughs> where are you? What's going on? Oh, father! Oh, father! <laughs> uh, no! No! <laughs> Finally, Blind Shin discovered the truth that Chung had sold herself as a sacrifice. No, Chung! I don't need my sight if I will never see you again! I don't need prosperity if you are gone! Please, stay with me! Chung, stay with me! Oh, no! <laughs> Don't go! I won't let you! <laughs> Take care of yourself, father! <laughs> no, Chung! Don't leave me! My daughter, Chung! Oh, no! Let's go! Hurry up! No, my Chung! No! Blind Shin was horrified no. and heartbroken to lose his daughter my like this. My only daughter! No, don't go! Oh, look, Chung is about to be sacrificed for 300 sacks of rice! Oh, my! Oh, so sad! Look at those waves! It's time to make a sacrifice! As the ship swayed among the stormy waves, Chung walked slowly towards the front deck of the ship. I do not fear death, but I... I pray that this will help my father see again. Please. Oh, father. Oh, father! Oh, no, Chung. Blind Shim was still as blind as ever, but now he grew ill from grief as he desperately missed his daughter. A month later, the same merchant ship was making its way back from China with new goods to trade. Look, what's that? Huh? How strange. It's an enormous lotus flower. How could a huge lotus bloom in the middle of the ocean? Well, that's weird. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh boy. Oh, the merchants cast in their fishing nets and brought the wondrous lotus on board. They brought the flower to the king and presented it to him. Oh. It's magnificent. Then one day... Oh, oh, oh! Who, who are you? I sacrificed myself to the sea to cure my father's blindness. But the Sea King has sent me back here to you. Oh, 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 oh my. The king was deeply touched by Chung's generous heart. The king fell in love with Chung's noble nature and lovely face and asked her to marry him. Oh, oh father. Uh, why are you distressed, my queen? Uh, your majesty, I miss my father. He is blind and cannot take care of himself. I would like to know if he's all right. Oh, 
The king announced a feast to feed the blind, hoping to find Chung's father. The last day of the feast came, and still blind Shim did not come. Oh, the sun is setting. The feast is almost done, and my father is still not here. Perhaps he really has been cured. Oh, I hope so. Oh, my father! Father! Father, it's me, Jung. Father, oh, father. Oh. Uh, no, uh, my daughter is dead. But I'm not. It's really me, Jung. I was sacrificed, but the Sea King gave me back my life when I told him my story. Could this be true, Jung? Uh, my child, is it really you? <gasps> yes, father! Father! Oh, <laughs> if only I could see you, my darling daughter. <sighs> As he said those words, oh. his eyes opened. Uh, uh, it's true, Chung! I can see! I can see! You have returned to me! <laughs> to this day, people remember Xia Cheng, her love for her father, and how she sacrificed herself to help him see. Jack and the Beanstalk Puss in Boots The Frog Prince Little Red Riding Hood Thumbelina Don Quixote Hansel and Gretel Little Women Ivan the Fool The Prince and the Pauper 